welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me right now for your very first time, as you know, I'm SB Ansel. Basically, right now I'm addressing to you all the last little part of what I hope to address on the mental health series, which I hope would be of value to you all, no matter what it may be. With me today, basically, I have been sharing with you all the everyday, you know, disorders or conditions that needs to be addressed regardless what it may be, so that hopefully we can be able to know what's right for us, you know, and all for them do basically, I was talking about the five classic, you know, signs or five classic, you know, personality traits of a BPD sufferers of how they go about it in their everyday life of relationships, even though, you know, as we know that sometimes with some people with mental health conditions, what have you, I feel that, you know, yes, it can be difficult, but then again, we are all still human. We all need the love and support, the inclusion and everything else right now, no matter what, you know. Because obviously, one way or another, we all need the help and support, you know, as well as it's okay to ask for help instead of just sitting there in silence thinking we can do whatever we want. No further ado though, guys, thanks for watching and your support. So this one is basically all about loving someone with the BPD. Okay, also basically on this piece, I it's similar layouts as I said basically for the other topics that I bought of self-harm, depression, suicide and the like. I can't remember the other ones but if you've been following me, hopefully these are of value and use to you regardless what it may be. So no further ado basically guys, this one is loving someone with BPD but before I start again, it's basically got to be our mind that no matter where we are in life that, you know, I am no doctor. I'm basically here it's just as a voice or just as an advocate or whatever you want to label me as to support others in their time of need regardless what it is, be it their emotional needs versus their, you know, spiritual needs or whatever it may be that hopefully that, you know, that they don't feel judged or they feel that they're getting the finger pointed on, you know, one way or another because many people just hate to be judged. That So, and all for the do, like... Some of these tips and advice, what have you, may not be of value to you, but take it from a grain of salt. And if you don't feel that some of it is, you know, not the way it is, just like I said, bear with me and actually maybe share your thoughts because I'm open to other people's thoughts and opinions here. I'm not here to prejudge or anything either because I, I'm still learning of certain things like anyone else. So in all for the do, let's continue on. Right, thinking about someone with basically BPD tosses you on a roller coaster road ride of emotions from being loved and landed to, to, lauded to, abandoned to, and bashed around. Having BPD is no picnic either, as I said before. Right, you live in a vulnerable, unbearable psychic pain most of the time, and in most severe cases, the disorder. Or on the border between reality and psychotics or psychosis. <coughs> your illness distorts your perceptions, causing antagonistic behavior, making the world a perilous place. Pain and terror of abandonment and feeling unwanted. If you like drama, excitement, and intensity, enjoy the ride because things will never be the same or calm. Following a passionate beginning, expect a stormy relationship that includes accusations, anger, jealousy, bullying. Control and breakups due to the insecurity of the person with BPD. Nothing is grey or gradual, however. For people with BPD, things are black and white. They have the qu quintessential Jekyll and Hyde personality. They fluctuate dramatically between idolizing and devaluing you and may suddenly and sporadically shift throughout the day. You never know what or how it happened, however, or what to expect. The intense... Labile emotions, however, evaluate, elevate you when they are in good spirits and crush you when they are not in their good spirits. You're a prince or a jerk, a princess or a witch. If you're on the outs with them, all their bad feelings get projected onto you. They can be vindictive and punish you with words, silence or other form of manipulations, which can be very destructive to your self-esteem. Unlike bipolar disorder, their moves shifts really quickly and aren't a departure from their normal self, however. What you see is their norm. Their emotions behave in unstable relationships, including work history, reflect a fragile shame based self image. This is often marked by sudden shifts, sometimes to the extent 
what they feel non-existent to. It is made worse when they're alone, however. Thus, they're dependent on others and may frequently seek advice from several people about the same question on the very same day. They're desperate to be loved and cared for, yet are very hypervigilant for any real or impaired signs of rejection or abandonment. It is common for them to cut off relatives' friends who may betray them, however. For them, trust is always an issue, often leading to distortions of reality and paranoia. You're seen as either for or against them and must take their side at all costs, lose, you know, lose it or what have you. Um, don't dare to defend their enemy, basically, or try to justify or explain any slight they can't claim to have experience. They may try to bait you into anger, then falsely accuse you of rejecting them, making you doubt reality and your sanity, or even brainwashed you as an emotional manipulation. It is not unusual for them to cut off friends or relatives, however, who they feel has betrayed them yet again. So, this is obviously an endless cycle, as we know. They react to the profound fears of abandonment with needy and clingy behaviours or anger and fury that reflect that their own skewed reality and self-image. On the other hand, they equally fear the romantic merger they are trying to create in themselves or others around them because they are afraid of being dominated or swallowed up too, by too much intimacy. In a close relationship, they must walk on the tightrope to balance the fear of being alone or being too close. So it's give and take for them, obviously, here. To do so, they try to control with commands or manipulation, including flattery or s and seduction, whereas narcissists enjoy being understood. Too much understanding frightens the borderline. Generally, borderlines are codependent, however, and find other codependent to merge with and to help them. They seek someone to provide stability and balance their ch changeable emotions, a codependent or narcissist who acts self-sufficient and controls his or her own feelings can provide a perfect match for those BPD sufferers. The borderline's partner vicariously comes alive through the meltdown or melodramas provided with the BPDs. The person with BPD may appear to be the underdog of the relationship, while well, his or her partner is in the steady, needless to say, caretaking top dog. In fact, both are codependents and it's hard for either of them to leave. They each exercise control in different ways. The non-BPD may do it through caretaking. A codependent who also yearns for love and fears abandonment may or can become the perfect caretaker for someone with BPD or whom they see won't leave. The codependent is easily seduced and carried away by romance and the person with BPD extreme openness and vulnerability. Passion and intense emotions are enlightening to the person without BPD, however, who finds being alone depressing or experiences healthy people as boring. Codependents already have low self-esteem and poor boundaries, so they place eight, accommodate and apologize when necessary and then when attacked in order to maintain the emotional connection in the relationship yet again. They give over more and more control to the borderline and furthermore their self low self-esteem and the couple's de dependency. Borderlines need boundaries as I said before setting a boundary snap them out of their delusional thinking calling their bluff also is helpful. Both strategies require that you build his or her own self-esteem learn to be assertive and derive outside emotional support. Giving into them and giving them control does not make them feel more safe but the opposite. BPD affects women more than men and about 2% of the US population. BPD usually is diagnosed in young adulthood when there has been a pattern of impulsivity and instability, however, in relationships, self-emotions included. They may use alcohol, food, drugs or the other addictions to try and self-medicate themselves from their pain, but it only exaggerate them. Like all personality disorders, BPD exists on a continuum wound from mild to severe, however. To diagnose BPD, at least five of the following symptoms must endure and must be enduring and present in a variety of areas. So therefore, basically, what I'm saying here is number one 
is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment, two unstable and intense personal relationships marked by alternating idolizing and devaluation, number three, persistently unstable sense of self, Number four, risky, potentially self-damaging impulsivity in at least two areas, e.g. substance abuse, reckless behavior, sex, spending, the like. Number five, recurrent self-mutilation or suicidal threats or behavior. Around 8 to 10% of people actually will commit suicide, so this doesn't correlate or qualify for numbers one or four, though, however, to be in mind here. Number six, mood swings, e.g. depressed, angry, irritable, anxious, mood not lasting more than a few days. Number seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. Eight, frequent, intense, inappropriate temper or anger. Nine, transistent, stress-related, paranoid thoughts or severe dissociative symptoms. The cause of BPD is not clearly known, but often there has been neglect, abandonment or abuse in childhood and possibly genetic factors plays the crucial role for BPD sufferers. People who have a first degree relative with BPD are five times more likely to develop BPD themselves. Research has shown from brain changes in the ability to regulate emotions. Right. For narcissists, however, or unlike narcissists, as I'm comparing right now, who often avoid therapy, borderlines usually welcome it. However, before then, recent treatment innovations you know, is that fitness has been questioned and answered. Use of medication as DBT, CBT, and some other medications have proven helpful, however, for these borderline sufferers. Borderlines need structure and a combination of knowing that they're cared for and about and firm boundaries are communicated harmlessly. Today, BPD is no longer a life sentence for most people that suffer it, however. So they have shown that some people recover on their own, some improve with weekly therapy, and some require hospitalization. Long-term treatment is required for maximum results with symptom relief. Increasingly improving, a 10-year study showed substantial remission after 10 years. Use of medication in TBT, DBT, schema therapy, and some other med- modalities have proven helpful. Most individuals with BPD have been able to co-occurring diagnosis such as addiction or depression. Acute symptoms diminish more Readily than temperamental ones such as anger, loneliness, and emptiness, and abandonment, and the like. Borderlines need structure and a combination of knowing that they're cared for about, plus their boundaries are communicated calmly and firmly. For partners, it's also important to seek therapy in order to raise your self esteem, learn to be assertive, and set boundaries. Obviously, basically, this is end of part 13, 14, or whatever I'm up to right now, based on the series of you know, what to do when loving someone with BPD, you know, just to clarify right now, basically give me the like for thumbs up for support, but also basically subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, basically, because I'm hopefully to run my videos weekly, but I can't always guarantee to promise that, even though, like I said, I'm behind schedule with some of mine. So in all further ado, guys, basically, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, ask me answers all, basically, also share my videos to family and friends, which is really important basically to create this awareness and build this connection between you guys. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for your support and I'll see you all again soon.